What are you searching for in game development? If it's an easy way to search for assets in your project, then I have a custom search provider example that will be right in your wheelhouse, and it has some particularly nice bonus features. Okay, so this is a little cart before horse. I haven't released my first devlog for my game as I needed to get some client work done. You see, my wife won't let me retire just yet, but I wanted to show some abstracted functionality from a tool it uses, and I'm sure it will pique the interest of some of the hardcore production devs out there. Anyway, devlog is incoming, game can be wishlisted from the link in the description, and in the meantime, let's get into it, shall we? I've shown the search window before in another video with how to use it instead of the dated search options for your components. I'll put a link in the description to that video. Now this video is going to ramp that search window up to 100 with the use of search providers. So first, let's look at creating our own search provider. You'll need a class, I called mine character search provider, foreshadowing of what it's going to do. In here, we will have a static method that returns a new search provider. We'll stick in the attribute search item provider above it to indicate to Unity exactly what it is. Now, we will create this provider with a unique ID and a display name that will come up in the search window. Now let's fill in the parameters, starting off with a filter ID. Now, if you haven't delved into the search window, you can actually see the full search string with this toggle and the word before the colon, that's the filter ID. Next, we can give it a priority. And then for show details, I'm choosing the default option but here you can play with the inspector, preview, or other options. You do you. Next comes the functionality. We want to fetch items. Now, I will spin this into a new method below, which we'll fill in shortly. But before we do, let's add fetch preview and fetch label, which we can use from the item that we're going to fetch. Basically, these dictate how the item is shown in the search window. So let's fetch some items. This method is a static enumerable that is going to return search items. We will call the method fetch items and give it the parameters from the above, the search context and the provider. Now, first off, if we don't have context, then this method should just break out as there's nothing really to do. But if we do, then let's start returning items, which we'll do in a for each loop. And basically we're using our own asset database find assets call. Now, I'm choosing to get prefabs from the asset database to then filter for my characters. And I happen to mark these particular characters with a label called NPC. And I show how to use labels in another video. I'll link that in the description. Now, this enables me to be specific with the characters I'm actually interested in. For instance, I don't want the player characters to be sourced in this search provider. Labels will also allow me to refine the results and speed up the next bit because there's less results being returned that I have to check for. Now, one thing to note here is that you need to leave a blank space at the end of the string as you'll want to concatenate the search query that the user will add in the search window should they want to refine further. So here is some boilerplate, is this a character asset code? I use the GUID, I load potential character and I check it is a character. Now, once I know it is, I can yield return a new search item by using the provider to create one with its context. The path to the asset, a label to place under the item in the search box. We'll skip the description because we don't need it. And next we want a preview, which I will get by using the asset preview class. And lastly, we can set the data to the character and you'll see why in a moment. Now let's see it in action. We go into Unity and we can launch the search tab with Control K, or you can use one of the search boxes. We can now see the option called characters and selecting that will return just the characters in our project. Now at this point, we might want to add a little extra functionality. So let's ping those characters when we select them in the search window. In our search provider, under the parameters, we add a track selection and we will spin this off as a new method of the same name. In here, we will use the ping object method from editor GUI utility and provide it with the asset from the data object we populated. Back in our search window and now selecting items will actually ping them. This is the basic setup for creating your own search provider to use. Maybe you just want to wrap search terms for people on your team or convenience option for yourself. Well, that's what this is. But let's go further in this video. You see, I have a drag drop handler for my scene view and my hierarchy view that whenever I drop a character into one of those, it asks me whether I want to place the character or create a spawn using it. Now I have covered how to create custom drop handlers. And like I've said plenty of times in this video, I'll leave a link in the description to that video 
to check out after this one. If you haven't watched all these videos I'm mentioning, you've got quite a list ahead of you. Now, you'll notice that we don't have a drag drop ability from the search window yet. Let's solve that. So we add another line to our search provider parameters called start drag, and we will create a static method of the same name below. Now in here, we want to prepare to start dragging, populate our object references, and then start the drag with a relevant title. Now, I've chosen just to do one character at a time. That's for me. But you can populate this with multiples from the multiple selections you can do in the search window. Now, when we have the search window open, we can drag into our scene view, and lo and behold, dragging and dropping has been enabled. And we can see our little pop-up asking us if we want to populate with the character or populate a spawn. So this is where I sum everything up. And I ask you to subscribe and wishlist the game and talk about the other videos coming up. And it's also where as soon as I started summing up, most people have moved on to their next video. They really want to avoid the self-promotional bit. But for those that stayed, here is a bonus tip just for you. And make sure to comment about it to confuse the people that just left. There is another attribute in the search utilities called search actions provider. Now this one enables you to have a right click option on those search results. So in keeping with the theme of this video, let's add an option for creating a spawn with the character in context. We make a static method. Let's call it character search provider action handler. Give it the attribute search actions provider. We will yield return a new search action. Give it the constant search provider ID from the search provider above. A name, we'll skip the icon. We are good devs, so we'll add a tool tip. And lastly, we'll give it the method we want, which is my custom method for creating a character spawn from characters. Now in the search window, we have a right click option and we can create our characters in their spawns even easier. And not only that, this option now becomes the default double click option in the search window. As we can see here, when I double click on that character, we can change this in the settings by clicking on the settings button in the bottom right of the search window. Now I've added another placeholder, a second action basically, that does an amazing job of spitting the character name into the debug log super useful, but I just wanted to add it so I could show you how you can now select what action happens by default. So you can imagine having multiple options on this particular search provider. And that's it. Honestly, there's nothing else. So I hope the example was helpful and let everyone know in the comments if you have a novel idea on how to use these search providers. I do love reading how people use the examples from these videos to make more impressive tools themselves. It makes me want to create more videos after all. And with that, I'm done.